Hello everybody, today is March 11th, and today we're doing Robot and Nonsense, hopefully something slightly more lighthearted after probably another week of strange headlines. Yeah, we don't know. We're probably a week behind. Sorry. Uh, and it feels like longer because of the way that time works now. You know what I've discovered about the 24-hour news cycle, though? They just play the same packages over and over. <laughs> yeah, I don't even look at, at uh. the news stuff until I need to confirm something. But, like, uh, Live Now from Fox is actually pretty good. Because their whole idea is like, we're not going to, this is not commentary. We're just going to show you the feeds and we're going to explain what's happening. And that's pretty good, but it's not really live 24 hours. Yeah, they never are. They have a lot of filler that they just stuff in there. Anyway, that has nothing to do with this. This has to do with, oh wait, the war. <laughs> and the unintentional consequences. Imagine you've got a big project and you've been working on it for a long time. You spent a lot of money. And then a crazy madman starts a war. Mm. <laughs> One web's internet satellites caught in the uh, standoff just uh, days before launch. Uh, Roscosmos uh, was refusing to launch the next batch of 36 One Web internet satellites unless the company meets the state's ag state agency's demands. I'm sure Elon Musk could launch them. Yeah. In fact, he's offered to. The demands <laughs> are they have to guarantee that it's never going to be used for surveillance of them and something else, like some crazy demand. And they said that if they did not get those demands met by a certain date, they were going to start taking the rocket apart. How bummed are you if you're one of the people working on that? Overwhelmingly, because you're probably never getting those back either. Are yeah. you are you going to get a refund? Probably not. There's no way to get you a refund. Oh, if yeah. All, the, all Here, the banking stuff shut down. Here's the exact number of rubles you gave us in the first place. They're now <laughs> worth 50 cents. <laughs> 25 cents. 10 cents. We learned about the robot border dogs last week. This week we have the reaction to it. Exclusive lawmakers express extreme concern over uh, border robot dog plan. A lot of you in the comments were like, "Hey, what would be the uh, what would be the downside of having a robot dog patrol the uh, border?" And it's not that; it's what comes next, which is explained in this article. But they're basically admitting that these people are illegally crossing the border. <laughs> <laughs> because why else would they be worried about it? Yeah. There shouldn't be anybody in those places. And this one is just terrifying because it's the kind of thing that it's amazing that we've learned to do it. But what are the consequences going to be here? AI designed protein awakens silenced genes one by one. So we're this is not a genetic modification. This is just you introduce a molecule into a cell and all of a sudden a gene comes on and starts doing things. So you got a gene, a recessive gene that's not doing anything for you? Well, just turn that on. Want a different color hair? There you go. Drink this Kool-Aid. <laughs> it's a little more to it than that. The article makes it sound like they're doing this to try to figure out what all the genes do, but right. some of them have to do with aging, and some of them are like, this should only be active you know, during week four to seven of gestation. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah, they can just fire up a Petri dish and one at a time selectively turn them on and off and be like well, let's see what happens if we turn this one off <laughs> this one is the anti-aging drug Woo that's the one this one causes horrible horrible <laughs> genetic defects <laughs> Go send that one to the NSA yeah they might need that later but you look fabulous as you age if you turn it off well Elon Musk is in his element he loves when there's a international crisis and he can get on Twitter and really Clap signal. back, yeah. Uh, but you got to admit, he is helping, and he is offering help in a time that we do need. Elon Musk suggests that SpaceX could totally protect the ISS following the Russian space chief's claims like, well, it could crash into Earth without our cooperation. Wouldn't it burn up before? Yeah. Like, is that even a real risk? Yeah, but Elon Musk is like, I got you, fam. It's funny. So, he said that there's, he's, you know, he doesn't even need a spare rocket. He's got this other thing that he's repurposing from some cave rescue so it's totally fine <laughs> <laughs> and uh the way he did it you know it's like there was some tweet it's like i think it's from a russian saying oh what are you going to do if we don't and his tweet was just the spacex logo i really am looking forward to the next spacex rocket being or yeah spacex rocket being named american broomstick <laughs> yeah i mean we have spacex blue origin nasa i mean what that's kind of an empty threat there russia uh, yeah, well, they're good at those lately, aren't they? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And here's a terrifying reality. Uh, because social media, as we know, can be monitored. Your face can be stolen for facial recognition. Your data can be mined. They're getting a lot from you on social media. And now they're going to get one more data point. AI model detects mental disorders based on web posts. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here, here is your billion dollar dot com idea. Grammarly, but for your mental disorders. So you have a browser plugin you install, and it's like, it sounds like you are, might be a little bit sociopathic. Would you like to change the terminology here a little bit? Well, but it doesn't look at your actual text, which is interesting. What it looks at is wild swings in your mood. Hmm. So if you're tweeting a lot, they claim to be able to match. It's like, okay, that was a manic episode. <laughs> Here's a depressive episode. I think we're onto something here. <laughs> Hey, it seems like you're in a depressive episode. Do you want to save this uh, for as a draft and maybe post this later? I'd be curious if it could work with less data. Like, me and Ryan don't tweet very often. I uh, doubt it. Would it be able doubt. to figure it out? Yeah. I mean, what's it going to do with cat pictures? <laughs> <laughs> You've been posting some weird memes lately. Have you considered stopping? <laughs> but I think even more terrifying is, you know, when this gets... When the government starts using this, it's yeah. like, oh, I don't know about these tweets. Now, here's a Second Amendment tweet, and here's a manic tweet. That's a red flag. <laughs> what if it's, uh, we would like to take your guns, and the algorithm says this one time you tweeted in 2016, it seemed like you shouldn't have a gun. Or that one time that ISIS tweeted an account that you followed <laughs> in 2016. <laughs> People have already been denied entry into our country for similar things. Well, moving on to nonsense, and this is a big follow-up. We've talked about this several times, but then it was only in the preview stages. Only the very fortunate, the influencers, were able to go. And now, everybody's able to go if you have tons of disposable income. Quote-unquote, windowless bunker. First reviews of Disney's $5,000 Star Wars hotel are in. Now, the headline makes it seem like it's crap, but the actual article makes it seem like people are genuinely satisfied if they're an extrovert. If you're willing to interact with all the actors. Yeah. Uh, there's a component of this, apparently, where you take on the role of something and you go on a mission. And so it's like one-on-one, -on -one, you with the actors. Which seems to be designed to keep you out of the horrible, horrible rooms. <laughs> yeah, look at these rooms. Which everybody hates. You will only go and sleep in the room. That could be good. I... Disney looked at their data and said, we don't want people to spend time in the rooms. They need to experience yeah, They're this. not spending money when they're in the room, right? Yeah. So. I just don't, just to, like, everything about this kind of vacation does not appeal to me. The, it's, it's, yeah, I mean, this, is that, that's not a real picture, though. That's just no, hard work. Yeah, that's there's, just there's hard. no real pictures here, so it's hard to. Are they all? This, uh, this girl, I guess, went. So if you're, you're dying to know, you can watch her video. I, uh, I went to the Spy Museum in, in Washington, D.C., and they kind of do this. At the beginning, they give you a, a cover identity. And uh, you go through, and you can you can have a little fun in the, uh, you know, when you're looking at all the different spy devices and going through the different floors and stuff. And that's what the part of the experience here is like. Here's your here's your cover identity. You're gonna have to go here and have a clandestine meeting and whatever. But here's the thing, right now it's brand new, and it's all influencers and early adopters. It's people that you know are like exuberant and and the probably the getting actors. paid. Yeah. So right now it's probably great. In two years, do you think the dropout actors working for Disney are going to be that committed every single day to making that experience the same thing? Uh, probably not. They just hire new. There's always a a grinding wheel of Disney interns and actors. That's true. Because once they hit like 21, you got to get rid of them, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have that whole college program. Well, we've seen so much disinformation. It's astonishing the amount of disinformation we've seen about this war, even though a lot of the disinformation is from the Ukrainian side, it seems. And not very many people are against them, as far as I can tell. They have a lot of goodwill, but I guess you can never have enough, right? Is this, quote-unquote, Ghost of Kiev video real? It's like, no, the video's not. It's from a video game. But the ghost might be real. We don't know. I want it to be real. Yeah. I believe. It's like a 4chan green text. I want it to be real. Bigfoot might be real. <laughs> Sir Barrington might be real. I also read today that... Uh, let's just do some more war talk. I read today <laughs> that they claim that their Air Force is mostly still intact. So why are they not hitting that convoy? That convoy. I've, I wonder, do they have, does Russia have people up in the air above that convoy? Maybe they got mobile anti-air parked with the convoy. 
maybe probably you don't see it in any of the satellite pictures though no there's there have been some mobile anti-air trucks that have been abandoned that are very well outfitted and uh some of those the missiles on those trucks have guidance systems because that was one of the things that came up was like oh that's surprising we thought that these were armed with the unguided missiles no it turns out they're guided well if it's anti-air it has to be guided It'd be a hell of a shot <laughs> hit a moving plane with a rocket well, these are some of the ones hitting buildings, so it's just kind of like, what are you doing? Oh, you're talking about the MLRS? Because they, they, didn't, they didn't explode right or something, and it's like, wait, it's got a tracking system on it. That is weird, because those are basically just like... Yeah. Well, oh, you know what? They did say that a lot of those, uh, the chaos agents that are in Ukraine, you know, as Russians, they're putting down uh, trackers. Mm. So maybe that's what they're doing with that. Mm, maybe. Roblox, man, Roblox is in the news every week. It is a juggernaut. Nancy Pelosi loves it. <laughs> Kids love it. And you know who else loves it? Currency traders. <laughs> Robo- Roblox currency Robux is outperforming the ruble. Uh, That's a recent development. Yeah. Well, not by the time they watch this. It probably will have gotten... <laughs> Way Roblox worse. have gone up more. Yeah, <laughs> way worse. I don't know why I, that made me think of it, but uh, one of the TV stations also shut down in Russia, and they're playing Swan Lake, which is the same thing that they did when the USSR collapsed. Brain TV. Yeah. Yeah, because they were the last private TV station, and uh, they were, you know, props to them. They were just balls out <laughs> <laughs> telling the truth. <laughs> They all walked out, I think. That's what I saw. Yeah, at Blake well, Swan Lake. Yeah. Well, no, they got the the message that but now anybody who is accused of, what do they call it, disinformation? Yeah, fake news. Uh, <laughs> you will be arrested. And they had already done plenty to, to already be in violation of that. Yeah. So they fled the country. We hope. Yeah. Also, apparently when you leave the country, you have to like have a round-trip ticket. Hmm. If they get the idea that you're not coming back, you're not leaving. It's basically North Korea at this point. <laughs> well, we've been talking a lot about that blue message. Do you want to be a blue message? Do you want to be a green message? <laughs> Turns out people are not tolerant of the other color. Who could have imagined that humans would be like that? <laughs> Jared Allen reveals that he had to get an iPhone because the Cavaliers wouldn't let him be part of the group text. They wanted all blue messages. Now, what for, a stupid... <laughs> For Jared Allen, that's probably not much of a problem. He can afford to go and drop a couple hundred on an iPhone. <laughs> but what a stupid thing. Athletes are very, uh, like, you know, they believe in all those little, anything that can give them an advantage. They want team unity. They're superstitious. Mm. There's a lot of that. And let's face it, maybe not the brightest people in the world. They didn't get to where they are thinking through problems. Not that there's anything wrong with that. And I just thought this was hilarious because, and this also, <laughs> this points out how quickly the world has moved on. Mm-hmm. Because, like, the one thing that we're not allowed to talk about, which we might be able to talk about it pretty soon, that's just gone. <laughs> <laughs> that's just gone. How is that gone? You'll never hear about it again. And unfortunately, the uh, I think the U.S. convoy is going to be a flop, don't you think? It already was. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. no one cares. No one cares about that, and no one still cares about this except for these bitch boys. <laughs> the CBC reports that uh, the trucks have left Ottawa, but phantom honking lingers for many Isn't downtown. That just part of living in a city. <laughs> Post-traumatic stress from weeks of honking is maybe a temporary mild trauma, a psychologist says. So it's kind of like a phantom limb. Yeah. Here's Zakir Virani. As I said before, bitch boy, <laughs> complaining about it. Uh, I'm hearing honking that's not there. Okay. Yeah. Get a pet goose. <laughs> and play goose game. Here's a here's a great one that you might not even believe. I assume this is a real Ukraine no, government no. website. Yes, yeah. it was. Yeah. But uh, they're letting everybody know. You know how sometimes our IRS will come out. It's like, hey, we got new rules for crypto. Better better learn about these. Ukraine has a different kind of press release. <laughs> no need to declare captured Russian tanks or other equipment of invaders as income. So they were, so they were joking Just about tanks. Fall. They're talking about weapons and other things, too. It's like, you know. Now, here is the big question. Can I insure that tank? 
No. No, you just do the Eastern Kentucky thing where you just put it in your yard and let it rot for 50 <laughs> years. Uh, you can sell it internationally, but it has to be made to where it can't fire. So you got to weld something on the turret. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger has one of those. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't want one. Because there's that does a lot of damage to roads yeah not many places you could take that yeah oh uh, well, you can put there are rubber things you can put on the treads that's what they do for parades but you know there's only like five yeah. sets of those you know i don't think they're going to have those in the <laughs> captured tanks and a set will probably cost you five grand yeah yeah, yeah. well we've learned a lot about uh, the bees the bees are just having a rough time they yes. are. like whatever we're doing to the world is not compatible with the bees and it seems the record heat has a crazy effect on them. Heat wave killed bees. Last summer's heat wave in BC called bees to uh, die. <laughs> That's not yeah. what that says. Now, in case you've never you seen too. a bee with it ready for copulation, that's what you're looking at here. Ugh. I don't know where the genitalia begins and ends, but it looks horrific. Yeah. Get the cursor off of it. Like, they, <laughs> they can't sweat, so they just die. So a beekeeper was worried about it. She was keeping a swimming pool so that the bees could go and collect that water and take it back. That's apparently what they do. But she observed that many who fell along the way, they all had the, uh, the junk out. Hmm. You know what? Maybe they saw a helicopter. <laughs> That's a rust joke. <laughs> Plant pollinator gardens. Plant what flowers. Are you, what are you pollinating right now, Krista? Uh, I don't have a lot of stuff out right now because it's still too early to plant, but I got some wildflower packets. Also some sunflower seeds to plant this Are year. Are you ready to take the step to bees? Oh, no. Seems I'm like we're having a shortage. No, I'm not, I'm not going to do bees. My husband is allergic. Oh. So we have to do maple syrup for our sweetener. High stakes beekeeping. There's a YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> Every time he walks out of the house, he's just covered in... <laughs> Uh, it's just, here's just a fun story of people being drunk. <laughs> Police chase a stolen skid steer, and a Wisconsin man was charged with uh, operating while intoxicated. Isn't it weird how every state has a different set of letters for that? Yeah. Come I didn't on. realize that. I had to think. I was like, O W I. There's a D U I, D W I, O W I. Is it the O because he's when I mean, he's driving? Operating, I guess. So that would mean they can get more vehicles. Uh, here, it was there was a change like that because uh, you could be on a horse and still be charged for oh. for operating. Oh, but a I guess horse. you don't drive a horse, do you? Yeah. No. Uh, a lawyer, a good lawyer, can probably get away with that. <laughs> I think we might have even had a case here where the guy on horseback couldn't get out of it, but another guy that had a horse pulling a wagon, the guy crawled in the back of the wagon and went to sleep, and and he he got out of the. The charge. The, yeah, the horse knew the way home, so it was just taking him home. What if I'm pulling a tank out of my yard with a tractor and I'm drinking a little? <laughs> as you do. As long as you, you own the land, it's probably fine. Man, if you love drinking and driving right now in Ukraine, you can do as much as you want. <laughs> High stakes. So you can do as much as you want. Well, we've learned that... Uh, now, I, I'm a big believer that just putting people in coffins and putting them in the ground seems like a terrible idea. Yeah. Why are we doing that? You know, it's, it doesn't mean anything. Because <laughs> your rotting corpse is toxic from all of the years of hormones. Well, just roast it. <laughs> just bake it. Why not? Put That's all those toxins in the atmosphere? That, that sounds good. Now, there's that one company in Seattle that wants to turn you into a tree. Yeah. Where they basically just cube... They, they mulch you. They compost you. Cube you. And then plant a tree in that cube. But maybe you love the ocean. Reef ball burials. A uh, new trend for becoming coral when you die. Now, you might be thinking you're going to feed the ocean. That's not actually the case. Really, you don't matter in this equation. No. They're going to burn you, take your ashes, and mix it in concrete, which will have no effect on the concrete. And then you get to become one of these little balls that fish live in. Isn't concrete really like a high-energy process? Mm -hmm. That seems more wasteful. Yeah. It emits a lot of carbon dioxide, too. Yeah. Unless you get the special carbon. Th there is a kind of concrete that absorbs car uh, carbon dioxide, which is pretty awesome. You know what would probably be just as beneficial for the fish? Just throw bodies in there. <laughs> that's what we do with Christmas trees. I don't know if that's good for them. That's acidic. No, no, the, the Kentucky uh, wildlife people, they take Christmas trees at the end of the year, and then they put them in, like, edges of ponds and lakes and stuff because that's habitat for the fish. Oh, okay. Aren't pine needles really acidic, though? They are, but they break down really quick. They're <laughs> not, like, not 
it's not going to change it. Our microbiota auto has evolved for that since we have a lot of those kind of trees. Yeah. Well, when it comes to signaling, virtue signaling, every company, every institution, they all want to do something to make it look like they are pro-Ukraine. That is the hot thing right now. And it doesn't matter how obscure your organization is. <laughs> the United Nations of Cat Federations, quote unquote, bans Russian cats from its competition. Oh, no. Look how happy that. that you think it looks is. happy? <laughs> His eyes match the container. Probably on purpose, right? So, uh, yeah, the Federation Internationale Feline, I'm probably not pronouncing that, it sounds French. Uh, if you have a Russian born cat, and I suppose they know that because they do all the genealogy, right? You oh, will yeah. not be taking part in cat competitions. The really Russian hitting blues. them where it hurts. Yeah. The board of uh, Fifi feels it cannot just witness these atrocities and do nothing. Does Putin have pets? Oh, he's got the dog, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, because he scared Merkel with it. Uh, I wonder think, if he actually has dogs or if he just got right. the dog just to do that. The dog probably lives at his house, but he doesn't interact with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we got to do black hole stories, right? Get two this week. Oh. A big week for black holes. Death spiral. A black hole spins on its side. Completely unexpected. It's coming I, for us. I did not know what to make of this. Yeah. I, they didn't really have an explanation of why it might do that. It's just they've never seen one do that before. Did it interact with something else that caused it to go cattywampus, maybe? I don't know. A bigger black hole. Maybe it's doing this in solidarity with Ukraine. <laughs> And last week, we told you about a black hole that was shockingly close to our home. Still a long way away, but we could only assume that it was coming for Krista, because she will be destroyed by a black hole eventually. Unfortunately, that was fake news. Black hole that was closest yet found does not exist, say scientists in a U-turn. So apparently it was just two stars that were really close together, with one siphoning off gas from the other. Oh. A vampire star. There That's was an episode worse. of Star Trek about that. Oh, how'd that play out? Uh, they were just there observing the interaction because it was a really rare celestial phenomenon and there was some kind of energy being that lived in the star. Was it vampiric? Yeah, it had trouble understanding. It, it had never seen carbon-based life before, so I didn't know. Where did it side on the Ukraine-Russian war? Uh, it was very pro-life. It, it would have been a very anti, anti-war organism. Well, speaking of life, do you know where life comes from? The human vagina. <laughs> and some people think that that makes a beautiful space vessel. There is a petition to launch a vulva-shaped spaceship, because why not? Because this, this is obviously in response to Blue Origin, right? Blue Origin's rather phallic spaceship. <laughs> it's very phallic. Is it... <laughs> You know, I'm not a rocket scientist, but isn't isn't that shape largely just because it's more efficient? Right, but they're claiming not here, but this is Huffington Post. <laughs> but you know what? You say, Wendell, you say that the Blue Origin rocket is phallic. All rockets are phallic. Yeah. The Blue Origin rocket is penis-shaped. <laughs> yeah. There's it's, a difference. It's phallic in a way that is not just, like, incidental. Yeah. But they are kind of just taking the part, like, they're they're carving out still a somewhat phallic shaped piece oh, yeah yeah i think there's some there's a lot of problems with this plan but they are right that once you get to space doesn't matter what shape it is it could be a cube <laughs> the border here that just makes me want a pistachio that mock-up image it looks like a pistachio shell has a different effect on me fox is looking to buy everything from our childhoods and destroy it. <laughs> and they're going to be As able to do. do so. Fox acquires the rights to Gumby and plans to reimagine the character. How do you oh, reimagine great. Gumby? Mm. He doesn't even talk, does he? Yeah, he talks. Does he? Yeah. I have no memory of that. I just remember the seeing horse, it on TV. The horse talks too, right? Yeah. Wow, I don't remember that at all. The it only, was like just before my time. I didn't really watch a lot of a lot of Gumby. It, was, it wasn't good. Yeah. Uh, it made me want to play more with modeling clay. And then I didn't understand how I couldn't... Like modeling clay, if you got different colors of modeling clay, the colors would mix together. And then it gets all poopy brown. brown. Yeah. yeah, and I was just, it's like, their eyes are so white. How do they do that? Did you have the moment, insane. did you have the moment of disappointment when you were making Easter eggs 
And you're like, oh, let's put all the colors in. And it just turns brown. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) We could already get brown eggs. (laughs) So, yeah, they're going to make a movie and another TV show, and they're going to stream the old Gumby stuff on their streaming service. And We should do a level one skit that's like a gritty Michael Bay Gumby. Ugh. Well, you're leading in. <laughs> we have to in. get better at modeling clay first. You're leading into the next story, which is not Michael Bay, but pretty close. <laughs> Jerry Bruckheimer producing movie based on Beyblade, a toy franchise for Paramount. I never had any of these. I never played with any of these. I think these were well after our time. I remember some well, people who were into this in my high school. No, there was a, there was a board game that was briefly popular that was really similar to this. But the, the board game came with everything. And so you'd like put the thing in the thing, and it was a circular like battle thing. And then you would pull the thing, and then it would I think the, you're describing exactly what this Beyblade, is. Yeah. Well, it was it was there was a board game version of this. It wasn't that, but it was something else. And that was that was <clears> no. That I was, think you have to have like a little arena, right? Because it, it so. has to be a bowl so that they'll eventually hit each other. This one I think was called Crossfire. Hmm. But it, and it just it came with everything you need, and it wasn't expandable or anything. Wasn't Beyblade like anime adjacent as well? Yes. Yeah. It was it was meant yeah. to be like collectible with the thing and the upgrade and the whatever. I thought there this, was an anime show with it too. Maybe I'm mistaking that. Well, I think so because Deadline says that it was created to compete with Pokemon. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah. <laughs> but so ultimately... Kids will never be maintain their interest level in cards. We have to have something more gimmicky like spinny top things and cards one out in the end. Yeah, well, they were wrong about that. But ultimately it's based on marbles, right? It's the game of marbles. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, it's just... More steps to it. Can we anyway, just stop doing reboots, though? Like, but how did... I mean, I don't think Beyblade had a storyline, did it? Or are you saying the anime... Are they going to redo the anime? Maybe. I don't know. I don't know a whole lot about, about it. Engagement challenge. You probably know. And another disappointing correction this week, unfortunately. Mm. I was, <laughs> I'm sad to include this, but we need to, to lay out the facts. Very Hungry Bear, quote-unquote Hank the Tank, is in fact three bears, the DNA shows. This is pretty good. This is some Ocean's Eleven level stuff right here. Also, why are we wasting DNA testing? Yeah. <laughs> Aren't there rape kits that are backlogged <laughs> somewhere? We're testing bears. <laughs> so there have been a, a rash of bear break-ins, and they had blamed Hank the Tank. Hank the Tank is one of the responsible bears, but there are uh, two others His at least. accomplices is what you're telling me. He's working with the team. <laughs> well, he's such a, a powerful bear in the bear community. He can command the other bears to go and do his bidding. They probably took that food back to him. Yeah. You got a cut. Just like Ocean's Eleven. <laughs> we need Jerry Bruckheimer on this story. This is a much more interesting story. That'd be yeah. an original story, and, and Hollywood can't do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> a two and a half hour movie about Frank the Tank. <laughs> Hank the Tank, not Frank. Oh, I'm sorry. Hank the Tank. Come on. <laughs> Hank's Frank, three. Frank the Tank is from old school, right? <laughs> what is that, that? Is that the last story? Yeah. Wow. 27 minutes. Wow. wow. It was a short week this week. Well, we were telling, we were talking about the short week people are going to be happy because all the episodes this week were short. <laughs> There's a lot more other things you can be worried about other than our <laughs> our news show. Uh, I don't know if it's going to do any good, though. It's not like you can affect it. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm consuming as much as I can of it. I'm wrapped with attention when it comes to the war. Did, we, did the U.S. ever come up with a refugee program? How are they going to get here? I mean, they're getting... They have to cross the border into another country to even get a flight. I think once they get to one of those countries, they're kind of like hoping to stay there because someday they might got to go home. Yeah. I don't know. Sad. There's a Uh, lot of sadness this week, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. uh, We'll see you guys next week. Maybe something good will happen by then. The odds of March? (laughs) (laughs) Maybe. (laughs) Maybe. Bye.